Well, from whether you own your own home, the school your child attends, even your health, over the last few years, we've talked about how Wichita's history of segregation has impacted all of these. This Black History Month, there's a new plea for African Americans to think about their memory as they age. Cakes Pilar Pedraza explains. Segregation and the discrimination that went with it not only determined who could live where and thus the wealth a family could build up from generation to generation through basic home ownership, it also had a serious impact on health. African Americans and black adults are known to be twice as likely of developing all cause dementia as they age. Living patterns, poverty, distrust of the medical community, all just parts of the puzzle for why this devastating loss of memory and Self is hitting one group of Americans harder than many, though not all others. Here in Kansas, the most recent reports show Native Americans have an even higher risk. It is of utmost importance that we identify treatments, therapies in the future that might be able to allow us to reduce this, this prevalence and really minimize risk in those populations. In both cases, laws often confine these groups to less desirable neighborhoods, neighborhoods they're still living in for the most part today. These maps tell the story. This is the old redlining map from the federal government determining who could qualify for a home loan. Homes in neighborhoods with too many African Americans, Hispanics, or other minorities blocked out in red, denied mortgages. Compare it to this, the current racial breakdown in Wichita, minorities still squeezed into many of those same neighborhoods. If we look at the health outcomes like arthritis, diabetes, high cholesterol, and heart disease, again, these are most common in the exact same neighborhoods. Those health outcomes also often precursors of age-related memory loss. So ensuring that anything that can be done to make, to protect your, your full body, to protect your health, is going to be beneficial for your brain. Except that's hard to do when, as a group, African Americans have historically avoided participating in health studies, at least since the early 1900s. Something Dr. Doris Molina Henry at the Alzheimer's Therapeutic Research Institute is trying to change. Participation has allowed us to understand understand something very important about the prevalence of certain factors in the uh, Black and African American community and other uh, racial and ethnic groups underrepresented in these studies. Specifically, she points to the AHEAD Alzheimer's study that looks at the presence of amyloid proteins in the brain, trying to catch Alzheimer's before symptoms appear and use preventative treatments that do appear to be working. We are learning more and more that inclusive science and inclusive research allows us to enrich the science and what we learn. But it is pivotal and pivotal in allowing us to, to make decisions as to what other research questions need to be addressed and making sure that we are paving paths for treatment of different populations and different presentations of the disease. According to the KDHE, Alzheimer's is the eighth most common cause of death in Kansas. And yet the Alzheimer's Association says, while well, African-American Kansans are about two times more likely than whites to have Alzheimer's and other dementia, they are only 34% more likely to get a diagnosis. Dr. Molina Henry argues a big step to changing these numbers is just getting involved in scientific studies like hers. Pilar Pedraza, Cake News, on your side.